Hey guys, I just wanted to give you a, a short video um, on Fusion, Fusion 360. Um, I love this product, it's, it's great. I've been using Inventor for a long time now, um, 11 years or so, 11, 12 years. Um, love Inventor, but Fusion for me is such a good product just to, to get on and, um, and use and throw some, some designs together, um, collaborating with people over the A3, A360. Um, and one thing that is that is so easy to do in Fusion, um, which we've got the tools inside of Inventor, but it's it's really easy to, to, to use the freeform tools inside of Fusion, and the engine handles it really well. So I just wanted to give you a, an overview of, of how you might do that with a very quick example, um, an example of some of the tools that you can use. Um, so once you're in the Fusion interface, and by the way, any of you watching this that have got a product design suite ultimate, guess what you've got access to fusion if you're an active subscription customer with autodesk and you've got a product design suite ultimate you actually have this product which you can use today um, and this product really does enable you to, um, to to better your designs and it becomes part of your workflow for any hobbyists out there that are watching this product is free for hobbyists for any startup companies that are watching this product is free for startup companies um, and it's it's an amazing product. The amount that you get in here for the price of this product is absolutely ridiculous. You can 3D model, you can do 2D drawings, you can do surface work, you can do freeform, you can do photorealistic renders, you can do animation and timeliners, you can do full 3D simulation, stress analysis, thermal, and you can also do um, CAM as well and create tool, tool paths for your machines of your designs directly from Fusion. It's a ridiculous product and it does work extremely well. Um, so let's just have a quick look at the, um, the freeform tools. Um, I'm going to show you this really quickly, um, but any follow-up questions then obviously just let me know. But um, let's go ahead and say that we want to, uh, to create a form. This would take us into the sculpt environment. Um, and essentially we can then come in and say that we want to create um, a primitive shape, such as a box or a plane or a, a cylinder. Um, in this case, let's go with a box. It would choose you uh, or allow you to choose a plane. Let's just choose this um, this flat plane, um, and let's drag out um, or drag out, sorry, um, a center point rectangle, and say that um, we're going to create something, uh, maybe a toy that's going to be I don't know. Let's just zoom out a little bit more. Around about uh, 300 millimeters in length by approximately 125. That's a rough shape. Um, you can see Fusion instantly turns that into a form for you, which we can start pushing and pulling. So let's say that we want a height of around about 75, but I actually want to split that up. We want to have four length faces. You can see this splits the length up into four segments, working like meshing. If you've used Maya or, or 3ds Max or even some of the tools in AutoCAD for this, it's kind of exactly the same. So let's just split these down. Um, we want to have three width faces and also three height faces as well. Once we've done that as part of the configuration, we can say that we also want to have sim, um, symmetry using mirror. We can say that we want length symmetry or width symmetry. Let's just pick width symmetry so it's picked up around the center here and press OK. Now that we've got that, we can start working and basically when you're working in this freeform environment, it, coming up here and choosing the modification tools and starting to work. So I can pick modify, hold down my control key and grab three faces. Because I have symmetry on, it grabs the same three faces on the opposite side. From there, we get this simple triad where we can scale. So I'm just going to scale those down. We can move by lifting them up. And we can also extrude by holding down Alt on our keyboard and dragging that out. That's option for any Mac users out there. So I'm just going to drag those out just a little bit, around about 35 millimeters. It's important to note that we do still have that type in. So we can absolutely come in here and do this with a level of intelligence. Let's just make that a little bit bigger now and then hold down my Alt key once more and drag that out again, maybe another 35 millimeters. From there, I'm gonna deselect this one and uh, just drag this out with a standard move and then another extrusion. Maybe we're gonna come out a little bit further this time to about 85 millimeters. From there, I'm absolutely fine. As well as picking up faces, we can pick up individual edges so I can grab this edge here, maybe spin this round using the view cube so I'm looking at this from the top, and then use my standard move tools to just basically pull this around roughly where I want it to be. Round about there is absolutely fine. I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this edge. Don't be afraid to zoom right in to make sure you're picking up the right edge. And I'm going to drag this one backwards a little bit 
like so. We can also choose to rotate these around should it not look the way you want it to look. I'm quite happy with that. Um, that's looking like the kind of shape that I want to get and that I want to achieve. So from there, let's just go to uh, a front view. From my front view, we can also pick up um, a window selection. Same as Inventor. A left to right window will only select what's fully enclosed. A right to left window will select everything that the window touches. So I'm just going to select these ones and we're just going to drag those up a tiny little bit at the front, just like that. We're also going to look at the thing from the back and do exactly the same thing from the back and drag those up a tiny little bit like so. Let's go to the front here and grab this, uh, this front face and just move it to begin with, drag it forwards a little bit and then once it's dragged forward we're going to hold down Alt and drag it forward again with our Alt key held down and that will create an extrusion for us rather than a move. So we're going to pull that out and then we're also going to scale that one up as well. We're also going to grab this edge and just move it up ever so slightly. Maybe look at this from the side, grab this whole face and move the whole thing down. Let's spin our, uh, our component round now and pick up this middle face. Again, hold down Alt and drag that upwards. It will create an extrusion and give us an extra face to work with. I'm just going to drag that up a little bit. Grab this front face now and pull him forward. Grab the back face, pull him backwards. Lower down the top face a little bit and then maybe grab this edge. Move him back to change the angle on the front there. Something like that. Absolutely fine for this example, perfect. Um, let's grab this back face. And again, we're just gonna move it up a little bit first just to get the curvature working. Then I'm gonna hold down Alt and drag him upwards. Only a little bit to begin with, just to create a new extrusion. With that new extrusion, I'm gonna then let go of Alt and scale him down using these side gizmos in both directions and then move him backwards a little bit. I hold down Alt again and then drag up to create another extrusion. And then once again, I can use my selection tools to then move that exactly how I want to. And again, I'm just doing all this by eye. Um, it takes a little bit of practice getting used to working in this freeform environment, uh, but you do get used to it quite quickly once you've um, been using it for a few sessions. Let's just um, extrude out to the side here a little bit. Just a tiny little bit. Once we're out on the side, we're gonna scale that right down. A little bit more. And then it screwed, screwed that out to the side. We can come back to these um, sections here. We're just gonna select this edge, spin it around, select the one underneath. So we've got the loop of edges. So I'm holding down control to make sure that I select those multiple edges and then we're just going to say that we want to pull those inwards, like so. Put a bit of focus on the front of this now. Um, so let's go around and select these uh, sections on the side, pull that in, make it a little bit skinnier underneath. Maybe we want to create uh, a little bit of detail on these sections. Um, so I'm going to hold down Alt. And with Alt held down, I'm just going to pull backwards, back into the model. You notice it creates a kind of cut. Um, I'm just going to move that inwards a little bit, just create maybe a couple of air vents. If you haven't seen by now, this is going to be some sort of jet, um, fighter jet of some sort. But I'm just going to just drag those in a little bit, which will create an indent. Again, it's the same as a standard extrusion. You hold down Alt, but by dragging it back into the model, it's basically going in and creating an extrusion into the model rather than an extrusion out of the model. Quite happy with that. Let's go to the back and grab these two sections here. Hold down Alt and bring them out. Make sure I have the right, just do an undo there. Make sure I have the right uh, part of the gizmo selected so it's actually going the right way. Also make sure I'm holding down Alt on the keyboard and that should pop out with an extrusion. I only wanna go about uh, 50 mil or so if that, I'm just going to scale that up quite a bit, like so. I'm then going to um, pull it back into the model, again with Alt held down, and then once it's back into the model, creating a cut, 
I'll then scale that face all the way down. Um, so before I um, complete and move on to that next feature, with those still selected, we're just going to choose to scale those right down in both directions. This will create a, um, a cut or a spherical cut, like so. From there, we could continue to add more detail. Um, we can come in and grab individual edges, for example. If I grab these edges all the way around the outside of this um, individual element, which is representing the, um, the afterburner or the air intake, we can grab that, and again, we can move these individual edges. As well as moving those individual edges, you'll notice that you can also hold down Alt while on those edges as well, should you want to choose to extrude those individual edges. I don't want to in this case, I'm more than happy with what I've got there. So we can really quickly create some, some very unique shapes, and we can create those unique shapes um, with a level of ease using the, f the tools that we've got inside of Fusion um, to be able to create something that otherwise might be quite difficult. Now the benefit that we have here, because Fusion is an all-in-one package, once you've got this component, we can basically start working on this, and we're going to take you through that on the next video that we create. Um, so once we have this component, should we want to turn this into a manufacturable part, we can simply finish the form, which takes us back into the standard Fusion, sketching, modeling tools, assembling tools, and we can take this component, and you can see that we can now use this as a body inside of the standard Fusion environment. Because of that, we could quite easily go in and create a tooling for this, um, through the CAM environment to be able to manufacture this part. So it's quite a crude example, it's quite a quick example. I am actually just going to go back in and change what I've done at the back there because I'm being very, very picky and I don't actually like what I've done. So we're just going to select those outside edges and choose to modify them and just bring them in a little bit just to make them a bit smaller because they're a little bit big. Again, the benefit of using this software, it's almost a deliberate mistake we can come in and say, I didn't like it, so we can make that much smaller. And again, finish the form. We can go back in and make those edits without any issues whatsoever. So I hope that's been useful. Um, literally just a quick overview of, of how we can work with Fusion and how we can get it to give us some really nice um, results without too much difficulty. Um, let's just go in and quickly finish that off. So we've gone and gone to the render environment. Within the render environment, I'm just going to change the appearance of this model. Um, let's come in and say that this is going to be made out of plastic. Uh, maybe we want some place opaque plastic and put a, a nice glossy orange on there, a nice man and machine orange. Let's just set the scene up. Uh, so we're going to have an environment rather than a solid position. The environment I'd like to use is going to be um, maybe in a field because it's going to be a toy plane. So we can download this, uh, this field environment, which should only take a couple of seconds dependent on our internet connection. This works a little bit like Showcase for any of you that have used the Showcase tools inside of the Product Design Suite or Factory Design Suite. This works exactly the same as Showcase, so we can have this environment which we can move in and start working with. Once we've got that environment, we can then go back to our settings and start looking at where we want the ground plane to be. We can start flattening the ground to make it look like this component is stuck on the ground. We can then say that we have a, a focal length we can say that we have an exposure value to make this lighter or darker. Let's go with about 14.6. I'm going to turn on depth of field. I want my center focus on the front of my plane with a blur of something like 0.25. We can close that, get our model to roughly where we want it to be, and then we can say that we would like to come in and turn on our rendering which turns on ray tracing and this will basically go through and ray trace our image this will just go through uh, rations much like showcase did in ray tracing after in and that has you depth of build what can we pro that are products from ridge really good to give you an idea of the kind of out that you can get let's just pick up one that i've made earlier and just open that up inside of a360 So you can get some pretty good renders without too much difficulty inside of Fusion. So hopefully that's been useful. A really quick overview of how we can um, can use the freeform tools inside of Fusion to create some um, some pretty unique shapes. Um, we'll catch you next time.
inside of Fusion. So hopefully that's been useful. A really quick overview of how we can um, can use the freeform tools inside of Fusion to create some um, some pretty unique shapes. Um, we'll catch you next time.